pretty big, pretty big pop. Those trees are blocking a lot. Yeah. Yeah, bleached leaner. Yeah, they're all the leaners in here. It should be bleached like that. thinking the 10 or 15 was packed off you okay with that 10 or 15 yeah we're gonna we'll go up here where we can find some place where we can put them on the hillside so we can get them back on easy yeah i won't feel mine no fuck no i'll lay down in it but i will not take it off till i got it. he needs to readjust probably yeah i think so but it's too much too much stuff too hard to get on and off <sighs> 
There's all this shit hooking up on front. Right. What are we doing? Waiting for the other part of our group. I know that. That's it. And then we're gonna move up till we can get flat ground. We'll do another sit or whatever before then. If you need to readjust, we can do that. I think everybody wants to take a little break. Well, we gotta get somewhere we can sit. All right. Actually, you wanna just do it here? No, I got this nice little all the way down. Feels good. It's good to get that weight off a little bit. Oh. Yeah, it does. It certainly will, guys. Right I'm actually starting to warm up or to be a little easier now. My muscles yeah. weren't, weren't warm at all before. Now they feel a little bit better. Yeah. Heart rate too feels better. I'm sitting at 130. Well, actually, when I'm pumping, I'm 135. Now it's 139. Heart rate. <laughs> I'm probably 120. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, that's about 120. I'll sit on that log. You want a little more altitude to sit on? Or get out of the sun, Chris? Yeah, that spot's a little low for me, too. You guys, we'll, I'm going to walk with Chris. We'll be right here. I'll progress with you. Yeah, so there's not enough little like side elevation for me to get off my pack over there. Right up here, maybe. Yeah, I actually feel better now. Yeah, my heart rate's less when I'm moving. You see me go down? I'm at 128 right now. So, you want to you want to do this? Yeah. I'll, that, you can do that one if you want. Out of the rock. I'll get this one. Ah, beauty. Ah, perfect. Yep. I had to get a, sto a slope tall enough and steep enough to get my back off. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> that was that was too low. Unload it. Anyway. <laughs> hey, is this a GoPro on? Look at the screen in the front. Yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's okay. counting. Five that would have been a good spot to sit on. So you freaking jab that shit up your nose. Right. Well, people might get an idea from what they've seen so far to this, what this is like, so. Yeah, I just told them I'm starting to warm up. My muscles and my cardio actually feel better than I thought I would. Oh, now it doesn't feel like it's 8 billion pounds that I'm going to die anymore. I see it better. Right on that corner? Yep. I don't know if there's enough room for your pack. Maybe. Try it. Your helmet might hit. Uh, last we saw him was he went around the corner. Yeah. <laughs> he was just right there. Yeah, right here. Dave Pilates. And then perfectly clear. Followed by a storm. Okay, we're progressing again. We're on the way to uh would be actually first camp. Uh location C is what we deemed it. <clears throat> This is the fun part of this trail, if you don't notice. There's this, that tree right there. All three foot thick of it snapped off across the trail. See the trail used to go right underneath it. So now they had to divert the trail, go around it. Here's, a, here's an inconvenient one block in the trail, huh? I wasn't exaggerating one of these trees I said are two and three feet thick in here that they do this with. So, uh, we're getting ready to start. We're in this camp town. Yeah. Careful of this stuff here. Yeah. You can't force everything to cut it and leave. I can't go off the side, can they? Because it was bridging too much weight to cut. Yeah. Yep. This is the best gap. You have to change the trail now. 
Now wait till we get a 12 foot root ball in the middle of the trail. See, look at the wear on that tree. And Forest Service didn't go down there and knock them branches off. A lot of wear on top of that tree right there. Oh yeah. Not up at this elevation, no. Down lower. This is our hairpin. <clears throat> and what we're gonna do is oh, wait. See if my camera's running. Running? Oh, it's running again. Sweet. So what we're gonna do now is this is the hairpin. We're gonna cruise around. We'll make a gradual loop around this canyon. We're gonna set up on the other opposing ridge over here. Sixty pounds. It's a lot of weight when you only won one forty nine. It's the amount of damage in this forest. And this is virtually nothing compared to the kill zone. The kill zone is blocked way heavier than this. Here's another one they had to cut through. See, and here's the base, here's the tree. This is its base. Here's the root base of the tree. It didn't come out of the ground right here. So all these are carry-ins. None of these broke in here, none of these were from here. This one's great, because this is the root base. It wasn't growing in the trail. So where did it come from? Because it didn't fall from right there. All right, now we're not even a tenth of a mile from camp. That's a good thing. So I think we're only going in Initial entries like 1.3 miles. We don't want to get too close to the lodge or their marked territory tonight. Um, we've already had a vocal, like I said, come from down below us by a big, big, very bassy grunt. So. so I hope this feature flattens out here. If it doesn't, we have to find a flat spot.
should start to flatten out, I sure hope. We may have to camp above trail. I bet we're not gonna beat right here. Yeah, this is a good spot, huh? Just up in those trees. Go yeah, back. I was gonna go down, but this finger's not gonna flatten out enough. Yeah. We're gonna have to get too far off trail, so. Can you take it a little bit up in there? Right behind this. Check out these frozen rodent burrows. Yeah. Cool, huh? We get right behind this cover here. That way we're hidden from the main trail. But we still don't have to get far to get to it, so. Gosh, damn, this shit's heavy. Motherfucker. You can feel it, huh? Yeah, that's why I don't want to go down off trail, because think about going up, it's going to be like. Well, this isn't bad right here, guys. This is it. All right. Got a lot of deer scat right here. Tons Got some deer. nice front cover. Yep, we're here. Okay, we're up here at the uh, Lodge Kill Zone area at Camp A. <clears throat> We've made the entry. We're now at 10,016 feet. And uh, we got set in here a little while ago. We started live streaming. I was told, uh, I got a message out and was told the live stream looks horrible. So I'm going to be giving you a, an overall of the camp and where we are and what we're doing. And you'll get a better grip on it. Uh, some of the most amazing shit in the world. Now, I, I told the guys about this, and old Ron and everybody, he said, no, you, you haven't talked any crap at all so far. So I'm pretty proud that, you know, what I said was no exaggeration. Don't wander off, bro. And uh, so anyway, but I'm going to let you look at this. Now, this is still not a big example of what they're doing and how it's going in here. But uh, let's do a little flip if we can. So they've been, we've seen about a hundred trees they laid across the trail and recently had to chop through. Um, some of them were up to three foot thick. And then they've been, here's another ones they probably managed to drag off. You can see they're tore out by the roots and stuff. And uh, they've been snapping these things off. And like this one here, you know, I'll give you an example. As you can see, it didn't come from here. It's not, well, well it did. It's actually busted right there. But this is size of trees right so uh we got this broke off and we got the shit all stuffed in it and what it is it creates a blind because there's the main trail down there and this makes a blind and this is new they just did this so I mean, this this is mine to protect me from any entry when i'm sleeping but what they've done is done knocked it down and then they've thrown all kinds of branches and stuff on top of it and piled and piled and piled 
They turned it into a blind. So you can see we're set up basically behind their ambush. And then this is a deer trail. And here's the deer trail. So the deer pass right through here. And there's there's old Ron. These guys are laying it out after coming up. Getting electronics dialed in. And so up here is the other side of the blind feature. And so you got a corridor here. So I'll show you what I mean. So there's deer droppings. And this is the deer corridor. And they kind of bottlenecked them right here. And that's why this ambush points here. And this side. <clears throat> they took these two trees, made another blind. I mean, they obviously didn't come here because there's no holes. But the neat part is, this is the equivalent of shoving a tree into the ground upside down. So this tree is about, you know, 50, 60 foot. And they come down to the roots, and then they got the tap root on it. And the only way you're going to get the tap root out, and it's leaned on that tree. So, I mean, it didn't, you know, come out of the ground and fall. Um, but anyway, so, but the only way you're going to get a tap root is if you pulled that tree out like a carrot. I mean, just straight out of the ground. Just ripped it straight out without even busting the taproot, a living tree, because a dead one's just gonna snap off. Both of these are done the same way. And they stacked them here to create the upper blind and it's cleared behind it. And so the game go between these two blind features, that one and this one, and they funnel them to the stop point and this is, am this is ambush. And there's a major corridor they drive them off of right here that goes up the mountain and it's all soft dirt opened and everything else it goes all the way down nice and clear and then this thing is a tree that they laid in and it's a probably a hundred foot long it goes from down there all the way to up here you know, I sound a little hoarse it's because I was still sick when we left here it's the same tree all the way up here And there's the root system right there. There's no hole. That's a carry-in. That's a 100 foot long carry-in, probably 28 inches thick at the base. And they dropped it here. That one's a dropped here. And then if we look beyond that, there's another one standing on its root ball with no hole. That's a carry-in and more. You might have caught that in that picture, but I'm gonna show you something else. Look at this, that's an X. But the cross point is eight feet off the ground. Those are 80 foot trees. That's a huge X, bigger than a huge X. So and straight up above us here, we've already had sentinels come in on us. They, they made noise from where I expected. I told the guys at a sentinel position I've experienced five years ago and four different trips in. And sure enough, that when we got there, we passed it by a couple hundred feet and, and, and he made a noise. And so you can see here that these are just laid in. Boom, 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 boom. And they're not wind damaged or anything because the tree didn't come out of the ground there. That X was a purposeful structure. Now that tree is a leaner, so, or it forms another X, but that one looked like it was pushed over there. But these two are carrions. And that tree that's carried in there is a good 20, 22 inches thick and all of 80 foot or more tall. Might even be closer to 90. That's the size of what they build with here. And they do it constantly. So anyway, we had vocals come from up here and we had uh, then three deliberate, nice clean knocks. And then we had, um, then we had, as well, we had a knock from that side. And we had, uh, like I said, we had a deep vocal just when we passed our, sorry, just when we passed our sentry position, we had a real deep vocal, ooh, ooh come down below us. And we expected something over there. And then um, we got in here and, and like we got a vocal at first, and then we got those three knocks from up top. And then we got another kind of vocal. And then what sounded to them, well, tradition stuff sounded like, like speech or talking. I don't think they got that recorded. 
and then they got a knock to the north a little while later and then we got another knock just about maybe 40 minutes ago over here to the south of us and we're sitting right in the middle of everything so um, for instance like you know the leaning bleach poles so we didn't bring these here so those leaning bleach poles that are go up 20 22 feet there and we've got just a few of those stacked in here that are real blatant got like five of them i think or six of them that are just in this section where they're doing this work so here's here's the other ones so and they're not from here they're leaned in do way up and then there's two more way up so all this is just basically language but this is where we're going to do our first night checking cam I'm sitting here in the bibby and uh, and you, you can see and I'm watching my you're watching the camera here it's outside a uh, Wi-Fi cam and keeping the uh, keeping everything right so you can move it over maybe you can see it see the screen or not probably not so there's an image on there and uh I'll cover the lights and you see it so i'm watching down below our camp right now as we as i sit in the bivy we've had we're at 10,016 feet elevation and we got about i don't know 30 mile an hour gusts in the trees right now i really got to watch the deadfalls in here it's insane how thick it is but it should be pretty good but uh, yeah, just sitting here checking out what's going on with the Wi-Fi, and everybody's down right now. It's still pretty early. We're gonna just, I'm just warming up. Some of the guys got a little bit of sleep. And we'll probably get back up here, I don't know, midnight or something like that when things probably start to kick off. Since we've already had a lot of activity and and really good stuff, man. A lot of vocals. Sounds like speech out there. Every once in a while, we hear talking in the distance. And uh, we had knocks, of course, come from three different directions. And one direction, three knocks in a row. And then we had a knock that sounded like a damn shotgun in the distance. I don't know if it was big rock or if it was big wood, but it was loud. It was like a damn gunshot. So, but they've seen the mellow out in the last hour, hour and a half. They haven't done anything, not even a peep. So like I said, we're just hanging out inside the bivy and watching the screen. Seeing if we get eye shine or a mover down below us. And got another camera on the tent right now, but I'm not logged into it at the moment. And I can log into it and uh, check myself out. But uh, this gives me a little bit of ability to look around clandestine. These cams are positioned like 40 feet from my bivy over through some foliage and stuff and they're so dim the 940 IR they'll look right at them so uh, you know if anything looks at it within 100 feet down below then I'll get eye shine and I can record on the phone from here and then when we go to sleep I'll get back up and switch those on and just let them record 720p all night so but anyway cool just thought I'd do a quick update from the uh, from the tent or the bivy, I should say. Not a lot of room in here. You can see, you lift your leg a little, you're already in the lid. So that's it. I guess that's all you need.
Claverwood coming in on it. That was a pretty big, pretty big pop. Okay, so laying inside the bivy right now and just had a hellacious couple of pops from something walking maybe 40 feet to the northwest of me here. I yelled out to my guys who's breaking sticks and uh, no answer. So it sounds like we got a subject just walking, walking up on us right now. Feet away, feet, feet, feet away. Let's take a look. That's our IR. That's one of my placed cameras. It's IR emitter. Let's go and light this place up, shall we? You can see nobody's out here. And I absolutely just had. Did you hear those pops, Wade? They were, yeah, they were, they were to, to this, to my, from the foot of my tent, they were about 1030 or 11 o'clock position. They only sounded 40 feet away. You got thermal on it or what? Well, I'm, I'm filming with IR right now. Might turn that other camera around. Because that sure was a hell, that was definitely something walking biped on top of branches. And it popped one, it had to be two inches thick. That was a hell of a pop. So I'm shooting with 940 nanometer light right now. About the most invisible they got. See the barrier they built over the last couple of days that we've decided to camp behind. I sure ain't seeing nobody though. So you're out? Yeah, just get my tent and put it over here by my tree. So the breeze is blowing that way. I got nothing on IR, at least not on the ground. It doesn't mean it wasn't in a tree.